and welcome to Small Holding Scotland's festival, virtual festival, hence the reason I'm sitting in the garden of the homestead. My name's Sandra Bannister and I'd like to just tell you a little bit about Midlife Homestead, which is where we live and how it started. We're giving you a little video of extracts of homestead living. We moved here, having built the house seven years ago and actually started Midlife Homestead two years ago after being able to grow sufficient veg and have sufficient animals that we reared, slaughtered and were able to sell. So it's a little bit about an insight of how you can have a midlife new adventure, not necessarily a midlife crisis. And during this lockdown period, actually having this outdoor space, animals to care for, vegetables to tend, has actually enabled us to stay very, very much sane and in touch with ourselves and actually feeling very good during this very difficult time. One of the things I'd like to talk about with homestead living is the fact that, as you can see, we're not in the first flush, flush of youth. We're uh, both midlifers and actually have come into this line of work as a hobby which then developed into a way of life. Homestead living is definitely not something that you can actually choose and opt in and out on certain days of the week or in certain seasons as we often find ourselves 7 o'clock in the morning, Christmas day, New Year's day, birthdays, high days and holidays actually always need to be outside tending the animals first thing in the morning, feeding, putting them to bed at night, bedding changes and as you can hear from putting in the bottom of this video is the dog Coney who's my usually usual faithful companion. This is the real this is the real star of the homestead. This is Connie, my faithful companion. Yeah, as you can see, likes a good lick of her mum. She's, we've had her since a pup and actually she's as happy around the hens, the sheep, the donkeys. Wasn't that keen on the pigs, to be honest. I think they were a bit uh, too noisy and too big bulky for her. But uh, she does like enjoy having an outside life. For the last two years in Midlife Homestead, we started delivering seasonal boxes. After having a number of successes in actually growing too many vegetables for both family and friends, it was suggested that with the polytunnel and the addition of some raised beds, that we actually could produce enough vegetables and seasonal produce that we could then supply locally. So the business model, as I say, very small micro business originated last spring and for the last two years we've been delivering seasonal produce on a Tuesday and Friday within a 10 mile radius of the homestead. As you can see it's Friday, I'm just about to put the last bag of spinach into somebody's box. We've been up since about 8 o'clock uh, cutting, as I say, all the vegetables fresh so that everybody gets things that are cut this morning, delivered this afternoon and hopefully on their table by this evening. in Scotland considers a polytunnel. It doesn't have to be quite as big as this one but anyway it does make a big, big difference. Great place to hide. It's a bit like having a man shed where you can hide a hide in here when it's warm in the sunshine. Right. Welcome to the little warm place. As you can see actually we're towards the end of the season so things are now starting to sort of go back a little bit. It was a bit like Jurassic Park in a jungle in here a few weeks ago. I've had to cut back a number of the vines for the cucumber and the courgettes were becoming rather triffid like so they've all been cut back. Um, I'll walk you through. Um, we saw cucumbers been growing a bit like vines when we went to Kew Gardens a few years ago and copied their idea rather than having them sprawling all over it, along the floor which makes a big difference when space is at a premium. I'm hopeful, as you can see, very hopeful because I've still got lots of new lettuce that we've sown but if, it's, if it stays warm long enough we might get some produce. As you can see Temperature can actually be quite two different extremes. Yesterday the top temperature was 36.1 and last night it was down to 1.5. Uh, 
at the current temperature, 19 degrees, so it feels lovely just now. Courgettes, you've got to love them because there are so much in abundance. We've used the courgettes of all sizes this year and we've actually loved having the flowers deep fried. I know it's a bit of a sin actually, but deep fried courgette flowers are a definite delicacy and a bit of a luxury and really must be enjoyed at least once. quite heavily this year and then with a lot of mushroom compost and as well as topsoil and actually that's helped us have a quite a significant crop. Um, you'll notice by the netting we've got quite a lot of butterflies that come to visit so this netting has actually proved a saviour and we've actually managed to grow quite a number of uh, vegetables successfully without being too caterpillar. This is our local, this is our little sheep. We have a flock of Shetland sheep. We got, our, we really came into sheep by accident, actually, by um, rather than by design. We got a few Shetlands about three years ago. Thoroughly enjoyed them. Very quirky sheep. They tend to have a mind of their own. We had our first flock of lambs two years ago, and we subsequently bred last year and this year. These are our boys. So it's delivered in spring this year and um, they're getting fattened up because they'll be leaving us shortly uh, they'll be leaving us in, the, in November so there is a field to fork mentality of here I think in a homestead you have to actually acknowledge the fact that you're not got a whole lot of field of pets you've actually got a field of livestock that require just as much love and attention as a pet often their feet need done checked as I say, they need all their vaccinations but actually what we do need to make sure is the fact that they actually do earn their keep. So these guys will be heading to our local abattoir in November as I say for lamb on the table by December. We constructed these raised beds in spring this year but one last year proved insufficient actually for the number of customers we have so we had to actually build another two this year which has made a significant difference to our ability to succession plant so these are our second lots of cabbages under here second lot of beans, beans, sweets, many purple top turnips all growing quite happily and as I say we had planted them initially in spring had a first crop and we're now starting to pick our second crop so one of this morning's jobs actually after I started finished picking actually all the vegetables rather large ungainly pile will be our compost for next year as it's a so we try whenever possible to use either something to feed the animals or compost so that we can reuse it ourselves next year here we are in the beginning of an orchard we have planted quite a number of trees both up at the house and actually here apple trees primarily some varied, uh, varied fruit trees up at the house um, and we're hoping that in a few years time we'll actually have sufficient fruit that we can actually use for the seasonal brought boxes however this year we're actually going to use them just for apple tarts come and meet my boys these are this is solomon he's 12 and he was rescued as i say off fetla by the donkey sanctuary and he came to live with us three years ago and this is his friend They were both abandoned and as I say we've adopted them so although they were ours as so, such they're my boys is that they're classified as my boys one of my daily jobs is mucking out their stable grooming them looking after their feet and actually on a homestead you think where you have to work quite hard despite the weather early morning starts it's nice having something that you actually really really enjoy and the boys are my guilty pleasure that's what I really enjoy having. Well you've got poos in here 
I did have a brush. These guys tend to love rolling in the mud, so they need to get a really good brush every day because they've got dry mud usually all over in their mane. You'll notice that actually Solly's got a bit of his mane missing. This is called Schoolboy Antics. So they run around the field, Patrick hangs on here as they play. Thank you. 